Okay. Um, so uh, let's try and get all my windows in the right place. This morning then, we're taking a look at Denmark. Um, we're going to go through the same kind of structure as we do every Tuesday. Oh, yes. We're going to have a look at the physical geography. Today, we're using Denmark to talk about glaciation. Ooh. Um, because Denmark um, could be seen as a fairly boring physical bit of geography, but you know, we're going to see what we can do with it. Uh, it's very, very flat, you see. Uh, we're going to have a look at some wildlife, um, including one particular pig. Um, we're then going to have a look at what comes next, the government. Uh, we're going to have a look at the economic standing, and of course, we're going to have a look at the culture. So um, let's start with where Denmark is in the world, though. Um, oh, the capital city. Uh, that's a good question, Elizabeth. Let's see. Uh, I will show you the capital city in a second. Uh, in fact, it's behind me right now. But if we go to our world map here, we can see that Denmark is a relatively small country. It's at the very bottom of Scandinavia. So the Scandinavian countries are usually shown as Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark. Um, so it itself is quite a small country, although it does have connection to other much larger country. Um, it's made up of a lot of islands. Uh, I think there's about 150 something islands in Denmark that make up the country. Um, not all of them have people on them. A lot of them are, are very tiny pieces of rock. But uh, if we have a look here, um, uh, yes, Vikings, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, some Vikings came from Denmark. They came from Denmark, Sweden, Norway, yeah, all over the place. Uh, Scandinavia, for sure. Uh, there will be wildlife mentioned either, yes. Uh, we will have a look at some cool Danish animals. Hmm. Okay. Um, so we can see uh, with this zoomed in map of Norway, uh, Denmark, that we've got loads of different islands. We've got the main island here, Jutland, or at least the biggest island. Then we've got Zealand over here, which has the capital, Copenhagen, right over there. Now, there is a, after Copenhagen, there's this huge bridge that leads all the way to this country here, which is Sweden. Um, uh, so I've been to Copenhagen, and that's where it is behind me, but I haven't adventured further north onto some of these other islands. Uh, there are also loads and loads of tiny little islands scattered around. Like I say, some of these have people on them. Most of them don't. Most of them are too small or just too, a, a bit too islandy. I don't know. Um, but it's a country of about five million people, which is a relatively small population, at least compared to England. Uh, we're looking at around the same population as Scotland, something like that. Uh, now let me just take a look at the chat, what we got here. Ah. ah, Laura's asking, was it part of Doggerland? I'm not sure if Doggerland directly stretched to Denmark. Doggerland, uh, for those of you who don't know, was an area that used to link the UK to uh, Holland. Uh, it's now under the sea because that was 10,000 years ago. Um, in the last 10,000 years, the sea level rose, which meant that Doggerland collapsed. But I don't think Doggerland directly connected to what is now Denmark. It would have been very close, mind. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we are going to talk about the Ice Age in a bit. Yes, so Copenhagen is the capital city, and you can see how it's spelt here. Um, C-O-P-E-N-H-A-G-E-N. -E -E it is both the capital city and the largest city. Um, it is, you know, uh, uh, a modern city, which is very similar to our cities in, in the UK, uh, with one slight difference, uh, which we'll have a look at when we look at physical now. Let's see. Whoop. Let's put that down over there again. Okay. So, a nice uh, country with lots and lots of islands. Let's go and have a look, though, at the relief. So, here's a map that shows the physical relief of Denmark. Now, that means how high it is off the ground. So, on a map like this, ooh, how can I get it in there? There we are. On a map like this, ooh, someone else coming to get in? Good morning. Uh, we can see not uh, the different countries, they're not labelled on here, but instead we get to see high land and low land. So on a relief map, a map like this one, um, low land is shown in green and the darker the green, the lower the land is. Um, and uh, yeah, so physical relief, this is what this map is called. So on a 
map like this, it shows the low land in green and the higher the land gets, the more brown it gets. So you can see Norway here. Norway is really high above the sea. It's all very jagged. There's lots of bumpy brown bits. It's basically a one great big chain of hills and mountains um, with just low land around the edges as the land slopes down to the sea. Yeah. Um, most of uh, Eastern Europe seems to be pretty flat here. Yeah. Most of Finland. Um, we've got some very flat land around here as well, uh, going down uh, uh, past the Black Sea. Now, when you could look at other mountainous countries, we can see Italy here, very mountainous, Greece, very mountainous, Turkey, hugely mountainous. Uh, in our own country, we can see that Scotland and going in the north of England and Wales, very mountainy, but then the southeast of England is very flat. Now, Denmark is all pretty much the same colour. It's all green. It's all very low. Um, there is, I would tell you what the highest mountain was, but unfortunately, there are no mountains in Denmark. There is a hill, which is about, uh, uh, whoop, yeah. uh, which isn't particularly high, um, but that's as good as it gets in Denmark, just hills, and not many of those. It's very, very uh, flat, okay? Um, now, the benefit, uh, I'm being asked to show the other maps. What I'll do is I'll go back to the other map. But let me just show you this picture first. The benefit of it being so flat is that it's a wonderful place for cycling, of course. Um, if uh, any of you out there are keen cyclists, you'll realise that it's best to ride around on flat land rather than having to go up hills and down hills. The down hills are fun, I know, but the up hills can be a pain for sure. Um, so... Uh, Denmark is an incredibly flat country, much like Holland in that way. Um, no, so it, uh, I'm being asked here, uh, do they speak Norwegian? No, they speak Danish, which is their own language. I believe it's quite similar to Norwegian, but I'm not being much of a linguistic expert. I couldn't tell you the real differences. Um, but yes, there are, there are, they have their own Danish language, yeah. And they have their own Danish money called the Krona. Um, Oh, do Dutch people, no, Dutch people come from Holland. Yes, that's right. Uh, Dutch people come from Holland. Danish people come from Denmark. Uh, the two countries are kind of similar. They have similar, uh, you know, topography, i.e. they're both very flat countries. Um, they're both, you know, connected or, or very, well, not connected to each other, but they're both very close to each other. If we look at our world map there, um, they have similar climates. Netherlands is a bit warmer. Um, and they both have the same uh, type of religion. Uh, all the Scandinavian countries, Holland and the UK, are mainly Protestant countries, whereas the rest of Europe tends to be either Catholic or Orthodox Christianity. Um, so, you know, culturally, we're talking more similar to Holland and Britain than we are to you know, France or Spain. Yeah. Um, oh, we'll come on to uh, some food in a bit. Mm. All right. So let's, uh, we'll come back up here and we'll go back to our physical maps here. So a good place for cycling. Now, if you go to Copenhagen, uh, much like if you go to the city of Amsterdam, you'll notice that there's not much traffic. Yeah, especially not today, I assume. But um, these countries where cycling is uh, easier, maybe because it's flatter. Um, these countries, they tend to have people cycling more and driving less, which is very good for the environment, of course, and good for people's fitness. Um, uh, Copenhagen, you can pretty much find bikes all over the city. And yeah, as I say, the roads are pretty quiet. Buses seem to trundle along, but not that many cars um, compared to like a big city like Manchester or London. Yeah. Um, how close is it to the UK? It's quite close. I, would, I don't know in miles, to be honest. Um, but we can see here's Denmark on our map here. And here's us. So, you know, it's not too, not too far. You could get in a boat along the east coast of Britain and you could sail in a straight line to Denmark. So, yeah, not too far. Um, here we go. Ah, Laura is saying she's been to Rotterdam, which is in Holland. Very good. And yes, Bilal, uh, Danish people uh, come from Denmark and as does Danish pastry. Yes, Danish pastries, they're a Danish thing from Denmark. So there you go. Yeah. Ah, and Finn is half Dutch. That's cool. We should do Holland, shouldn't we, when we get to H? Or maybe we have to wait till N to do the Netherlands. Mm. Uh, yes, I am filming. Thank you, AJ. All right. Um, so, very, very flat. Now, it would be completely flat, like a great big piece of paper, um, if 
it hadn't been uh, created, affected, um, um, adapted by glaciers. So if we have a look here at a lovely bit of Danish countryside, you can see we got, it is quite flat, but it's not completely flat. Yeah, um, it's all quite low land. You can see away to the horizon there. There's no great big mountains poking up in the distance or anything like that. Um, what we've got though is not a not an even surface. It's not completely flat like a piece of paper. Instead, we've got all these lovely rumps and bumps and uh, you know uh, dips and uh, rises. Yeah, a bit like Norfolk. Yeah, Grace. Yeah, you, I can see the the the. Yeah, similar to Norfolk or Lincolnshire, places like that. Yeah, we do have a lot of flat land, especially in the east and the southeast of Britain. So, yeah, that works. Oh, Captain Toad, exclamation mark, drove through Germany and Holland to get to Denmark. There you go. Yes. Yeah, it's not that far. You know, you can drive there. Yes. <laughs> Taylor, you're half Dutch too. Excellent. Okay. So, the question is then, why is the landscape like this? How did it become... Um, so lumpy and bumpy while at the same time being very very flat you know in mountainous areas we can look at those and often we know that mountains have been formed by tectonic plates coming together and pushing each other up to create these great big peaks uh, that obviously hasn't happened in Denmark so we need to think about uh, thousands of years ago so here's a map uh, which shows what it would have been like 10,000 plus years ago, even more than 10,000 years ago. Um, and our white area here are areas that were covered in ice during the last ice age. So you'll notice Norway, Sweden, Finland, completely covered in ice. Denmark here, most of it covered in ice. We've got a little fringe here, which isn't, but most of it is down into North, um, uh, Northern Germany. And of course, most of the UK and Ireland is completely covered in ice too. So it's the ice that's going to be important into why we now have landscapes like in Denmark. Um, let me just... Uh, uh, da -da -da. <laughs> yes, uh, we're, <laughs> Belial, we are going to have a look at the money. Uh, we'll, we'll look at that a bit later, yes. Um, was it one big glacier? So during the last ice age, there were lots of different glaciers. Um, a glacier is basically a very, very, very slow moving river. Okay, uh, We still have glaciers today. They're just not in this part of the world. There's no glaciers in Britain or Denmark anymore. Um, but if you go far enough north, uh, up into the Arctic Circle, you will find glaciers. And they are incredibly slow rivers because they're made of ice. Now, that doesn't mean that they're completely stopped. They do move. Um, some particularly fast glaciers move as much as a meter a year. Ooh. Um, but you wouldn't be able to see them move. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, they, they sort of inch their way along year by year, these great big flows of ice. Um, which are pretty much solid. Um, Eleanor is asking, is it cold in Denmark? Well, as we can see, so if we if we think about cold and hot, our different climates, uh, we've got to think where it is on a line with Britain. So we can see that the north of Denmark here is you know, roughly in line with the south of Scotland. So it's going to be a similar temperature to the south of Scotland. Um, whereas uh, the south of Denmark is more in line with the north of Wales. So you know, that, that's the kind of weather we're looking at. Um, not massively different temperatures in de between Denmark and here at all. Um, there we go. Okay. Um, so if we go back far enough, the whole place, pretty much the whole of Denmark, was covered in these ice sheets and glaciers. And the idea is that before those glaciers came, it would have been pretty flat. But as those glaciers acted on Denmark, much like they acted on the UK, uh, there's plenty of evidence of glaciation in this country. Um, but as the, the glaciers acted on it, it changes the landscape. So here's a, a, what a glacier looks like for those of you who have ne never met one of these things. Um, my favourite fact about glaciers is that the front of a glacier, the bit where the, the ice is moving down for, um, that is known as the snout. Glaciers have snouts, a great big snouty nose at the front, and that's what pushes on down. That's the front of your of your glacier. 
Um, oh, the curry, currency I share in Amar uh, is the krona. Uh, I think it's spelled K-R-O-N-E in Denmark, although you know, there are different types of krona in different Scandinavian countries. I believe uh, this one is K-R-O-N-E, krona. Um, yeah, it is kind of cute, isn't it, Rowan, that a glacier would have a snout. Yes, in fact, I can. I should bring up a, a photo of a snout so it makes more sense, I suppose. Um, Uh, so describing it just as a great big river of ice doesn't really help us, does it? But maybe if I show you a picture, uh, that would make it a bit better. Here's a nice one. So if we were going to look at a glacier today, here's a photo of one. You can see that it's a huge river of ice that is starting all the way back here. And it flows down, as I say, very, very slowly, inches a year or whatever. And at the front, this area here is called the snout of the glacier, the front. Uh, the big nose sort of pokes out, much like on a pig. Now, glaciers, although they move very, very slowly, they can cause all kinds of wonderful geographical phenomena. They can um, make smooth uh, runnels in the ground, like, like a river going through a valley makes... Uh, forms like a nice v-shape often between two hills uh, glaciers because they're if you were going to go down to the bottom of a glacier which would be impossible unless you could move through ice of course but if you were going to go down and check out the bottom you would find that the whole thing is made up of loads of sharp stones and bricks and bits of bone and all kinds of stuff that has frozen solid that has been covered by the glacier and because it's moving all of that stuff it just scrapes along the ground like sandpaper. So even though this is moving very, very slowly, as it does move, all those bumpy bits of the bottom of, the, of our snouty glacier, they scrape away at the floor and they make these wonderful sort of um, gentle curved um, areas. If we go back to our picture, you can just see how lovely curvy this landscape is. And some of that will be from the glacier just scraping away all kind of gently and making it all polished and curved as it goes along. Um, the capital city, uh, Lauren, is called Copenhagen. There you go, Copenhagen. Um, how cold would they be? Well, these are frozen, so they're going to be below zero um, because they are frozen ice, yes. I don't know. Uh, I know the core of a, a glacier, so if, if you went into the glacier, it would get colder the deeper you went into it, and it would be coldest at the bottom. Um, uh, I don't entirely know how cold that is. I don't know what the average temperature of a glacier is. Um, very cold, though, we're talking, yeah. How do they move? So, uh, Bilal, they move because they're made of water. So they are flowing, um, but very, very slowly. And so just like water moves with gravity, so do the glaciers. So maybe the flowing isn't quite the right word. But because they're pointing downhill, they will stretch out and they will move down with the force of gravity. Uh, uh, it could be that cold, Grace, yeah. Uh, Armani, the capital city, is Copenhagen. That is the capital city of Denmark, is Copenhagen. There you go. And they speak Danish, that's the language. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, come back to our glacier over here. Uh, oh, much slower, Ritson family. Uh, glaciers move much slower than the hands of a clock. Mm, uh, maybe. Uh, hands of the clock can move incredibly slow, um, but no, glaciers are moving. Some of them only move a few centimeters every year. Um, others move uh, in huge, you know, can move really fast, about a meter a year. Ooh. Um, for those of you asking, this is how you spell Copenhagen. There you go. Copenhagen. There you go. So, oh, more people coming in. Good morning. So we've got our glaciers, which would have stretched down uh, the, from the north to the south of Denmark in the last ice age. But the real reason that they've changed the landscape quite so much is because, well, they're not there anymore. They have retreated. Uh, the glaciers have gone, but they didn't all just disappear in, uh, <laughs> in one day. No, no, no. What they would do 
is the glaciers would slowly melt over time as the earth started to heap up, heat up and as the lands of Denmark started to heat up, the glaciers started to melt back. And this happened ever so slowly. We're, as I say, we're not talking like uh, suddenly the sun comes out and the whole thing just goes. Um, it happens gradually over time. Uh, more and more of the glacier would start to melt, which means that water runs off. Of course, the outside of the glacier starts to melt first, which would have meant that rivers would form where the glacier had been. So we can see these sorts of rivers coming out here where that melting ice is coming from. Um, now, if it happened really, really fast, it would cause a flood. So it could well have done at times, maybe, you know, large sections of the, of the glacier started to melt at the same time and would cause the odd flood. Um, but there's other more interesting, or maybe not more interesting, but different geolog geographical phenomena that we have here. So we see this ridge here on our diagram, the terminal moraine. Now the moraine is the area or, or, the, or the load of rocks, soil, um, bits of dead animal, whatever you can think of really, that's all pushed ahead. As, as the glacier was moving down, it would sort of ruffle up the ground and push ahead of it loads of stuff yeah and we call that a moraine uh, i'm never sure if you pronounce it moraine it might be moraine i don't know um uh, we've also got eskers which are low hills that are left behind deposits of uh, uh no sorry drumlins there the deposits eskers are grooves in the ground that have been cut out by the uh uh, uh glacier as it moves oh here we go um drumlins are hills that are left deposits of stone or uh, soil that are left behind when the glacier retreats. Uh, same with these caimis here. Um, <laughs> uh, we've also got, but our moraine, when the glacier goes back, it doesn't take all the stuff that it was pushing out ahead of it. So we're left with this great big ridge, uh, which can also explain the lumpy, bumpy uh, uh, surface of Denmark. It's all this left behind stuff. Yeah, very fertile, very good for growing plants because there'll be all kinds of, of wonderful, useful things in there. Mm. <laughs> Aha, there you are. There's, a, there's an Esker, uh, a place called Esker near where Grace lives. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, James, I will, I'll go back to the map in a moment. Um, so Denmark created, or at least the way that Denmark is today, created a long, long time ago by these glaciers. Now in Britain we have glaciers too, or we had glaciers, um, but because our land, at least in the uh, west of our country, places like Wales, um, the glaciers there, they affected the mountains so and the hills. So we have different sets of landscape caused by glaciers, but because Denmark was flat, it's the retreat of the glacier that really makes the difference, leaves all those lumps, bumps, and curves. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Grace. Not a, <laughs> oh, there's a, there's a person called Esker. Oh, no, there is an actual Esker <laughs> near Grace. I see Esker. Sorry, Grace. I thought you said there's a place called Esker. So there's an Esker left behind by a glacier near Grace's house. That's very cool. Yeah. Uh, the outwash plain there, Shadow, that's where the water that outwashes, that washes out from the... Um, uh, glacier that's where it will gather so we can see that it creates these kettle like uh, little mini lakes and things we've got the rivers coming and it would at times flood i, I assume as well uh, into the outwash plain uh, that's where everything washes out from the glacier i guess yeah <laughs> all right so uh let's uh well i'll tell you what before we go back to the main map let's just take a look at this because it's worth mentioning that for a very long time, up until hmm, the 1970s, Denmark was actually quite a lot bigger because as you can see here, there is the country of Greenland, which is a huge country, absolutely massive. And up until the 1970s, that was part of Denmark. Now it's still kind of part of Denmark, but kind of not at the same time. It has its own independence, but it is still you know, seen on maps and it's still connected to Denmark. Most of the people that live there are Danish or had, had started off life in Denmark. Um, if we go back in history even further, Denmark for a, a very long time controlled Iceland. Um, so, you know, and even parts of northern Germany. So Denmark is one of these countries, a bit like our own, which used to have quite a big empire and that's contracted and got smaller over the years. Um, 
but Denmark and Greenland still very much connected. Uh, kind of, I suppose, a bit like Britain and, I don't know, somewhere like Australia or Canada. You know, we used to own it. We don't anymore. We've still got ties. They still have our queen, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, oh, tomorrow, what is a rock bed? So that would just be, um, well, you know, in Minecraft, when you dig down and eventually you hit bedrock, yeah, uh, the rock bed would be the rock that, that forms the base layer of, of the country. Yeah. And on top of that are loads of other rocks, uh, uh, plants, you know, uh, soil, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, so Denmark, often if you look on a map of, of the world, you will see that, that Greenland has Denmark in brackets usually because it's so closely connected to Denmark uh, politically. Although it's important and it will be important as we'll see in a bit. Um, Denmark does not belong, uh, does not own Greenland. Okay, bear that in mind. We will come to that in a minute. So Denmark and Greenland, kind of the same country, but also kind of separate. Oh, Captain Toad, I didn't even mention the Faroe Islands. Yes, the Faroe Islands are in exactly the same position as Greenland. Uh, they got, they, they were given there a bit of independence a bit sooner. I think in the 1950s, the Faroe Islands were given independence. Um, but I thought I'd focus on Greenland today. Yeah, <laughs> Bedrock. Very good. Um, okay, so uh, I've just had a request to go back to the map, the original map for a second. So let's go back there uh, before we go and look at our wildlife. Oh, hang on. Uh, there we go. So um, just to recap on our map, we've got loads of islands. We've got our capital, Copenhagen. We've got the main island, Jutland. Uh, the sea this side is also known as the Jutland Sea. There was a great battle there in World War I uh, between the British and the Germans, uh, if you've ever heard of J the Battle of Jutland. I don't know, maybe you have. Um, of course, then we've got Zealand, so we can see that, you know, uh, that's this island here. And then we've got uh, Lolland, which is quite a cool name for something. Uh, Funen, mm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing these right. <laughs> uh, when was that, Rukia? Uh, the Battle of Jutland was like 19, I gotta say 16, maybe, yeah. Possibly 1915. Um, okay. Oh, and Libby, Denmark is in the continent of Europe. So yes, it's part of Europe. Yeah. Uh, was New Zealand owned by Denmark? Hmm. Was it founded by Denmark? Possibly. I don't think it was ever owned by Denmark. I kind of thought it was the Dutch who uh, established uh, New Zealand. But then my New Zealand history isn't great. So hmm, I'll have to look that up. Yeah. Um, was it? I don't think it was that late, Jasper. I think uh, I think Jutland was was earlier than nineteen eighteen. Um, but yeah, Google me, Google me. We'll find out. Okay. Now then, um, let's go and take a look at the wildlife. Now, uh, the wildlife of Denmark is cool, but maybe not quite as interesting as some of the other places that we've looked at. You know, we haven't really got exotic animals because it's a very similar. Um, uh, country to our own. Now, the national animal of Denmark, the, the, the animal that is associated most cleanly with, closely with Denmark, is this mute swan. So there you are, a beautiful swan. Um, a bit like a goose, yes, but no, this is a swan. Um, now, uh, swans can be found all over Denmark, in the rivers and the streams and the lakes and all that kind of stuff. Um, and as we'll see, there's a very famous story. Ah, 1916. Uh, that's right, Jasper. Um, there's a there's a famous story um, about a swan, which we'll mention when we get to the cultural bit. Um, I've picked some other animals here. So we've got pigs. You know, De Denmark is famous for its pig production and its date and its bacon production. Um, they do. Uh, Denmark, strangely, weird fact about Denmark, is that the pig farmers, they, you know rear their pigs for meat but they also uh, a lot of them save up all the pig wee because the pig wee can be used in makeup especially in the production of lipstick so there you go um if you are eating bacon and wearing lipstick you might well have parts of the same pig on you weird mm. uh yes bailey it is but we'll come to that in a minute um yep i, I also added a walrus now walruses very, very rarely go to Denmark, but they have been known to visit. So I thought, well, that's a cool exotic animal to put in, even if, strictly speaking, it's not a, it's not a proper Danish animal. But there you go. <laughs> um, and yes, and then we've got our goat, uh, goat thing up here. Okay. Um, now, one of the most interesting animals in Denmark is this particular pig. This is the Danish protest pig. Da, 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 da. Um, 
Now, the Danish people, they have bred a lots and lots of different pigs. And usually different animals are bred in different ways. So farmers will encourage animals to to grow depending on how useful they are to people so uh, have, in the case of pigs you might well try and breed the biggest most tasty kind of pig that you can to make bacon with yeah or sausages or whatever you're making oh Rakea asks is there any animals in Denmark that are endangered not as far as I know um, whilst I was researching this I did find that there used to be wolverines there and they are now extinct in Denmark um, they only live further north, so I suppose, you know, um, but as far as I know, I, I don't know of any endangered species. Uh, I, I assume there are species of bird and things, because every country has something that's endangered. So I imagine their their birds of prey and things possibly are, are endangered, but not that I know of. Yeah. Hmm. Now, this pig wasn't bred to make bacon. It was not bred to eat. It was bred in a time when Denmark had been conquered by Prussia, the Germans from below. Uh, what used to be, you know, Prussia is what Germany is today. Um, oh, wolverines are like little bear cats. They're like, uh, yeah, wild bear cat animals. Mm. Um, so uh, the the whole country was taken over by the Prussians, and there was a law put in place that the Danish people were no longer allowed to fly their flag. It is against the law. You must forget about your Danish heritage, and you must just be Prussian. Da, 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 da. And so some clever pig farmers got together and they ended up breeding what they called the Danish protest pig. It is a pig that is supposed to look like the flag of Denmark. So you can see we've got the red color with the white stripe, just like the Danish flag here. So the idea was that they couldn't fly their flag, but they could sneakily walk around with pigs. Hmm. They go up to their Prussian overlords. Hello, Prussian overlord. Hmm. I'm being a good citizen. I don't have a Danish flag. I just have this pig. <coughs> Protest pigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not it's the only animal that I've ever heard of that has been bred in protest to another country. Um, I can't think of, you know, I haven't heard of like a, a, a an angry protest cow or anything like that. But, no. <coughs> hmm. uh, Belial has found some threatened species here. Thank you, Belial, for, the, for having a go there. Um, apparently the... Uh, Eurasian otter and the harbour porpoise are both endangered, as is the pond bat. Oh, there you go. Um, I have no idea what a pond bat is, but I kind of want to find out now. Hmm, that's what I'm going to do after this lesson. Look up the word pond bat. I assume it's a bat that lives in a pond, but I don't know. Hmm. Okay, so there's a bit about the wildlife. Um, the national animal being the swan. <laughs> now, let's have a look at the government and here we go. Here's our Prime Minister of Denmark, uh, Meta Friedrichsen. She's relatively new to the job. She was elected last year. Um, <laughs> and she is uh, the Prime Minister. So that tells us that uh, Denmark has a very similar government to our own. Um, there's a parliament which is elected by the people. And that parliament uh, makes the makes the laws and the rules. Now, Meta Friedrichsen is slightly different from our leaders in the fact that she's relatively young. Um, well, and she's female as well. Yes, I suppose we don't have a prime ministress. That's not a thing, is it? Prime mistress? No, we don't have a female prime minister at the moment. We have a male one. Um, and yeah, female leaders are fairly rare, I suppose. Not so much in Scandinavia and Europe, though, in general. Um, but the impressive thing about Meta Friedrichsen is that she's relatively young. She's only 42 years old, which for a world leader, if we think about some of the most important people in the world at the moment, they're usually, you know, in their 50s or if you're Donald Trump in your 70s. Um, so, you know, uh, a bit of young blood in the Danish parliament there to lead it forwards. Um, now, she's not the person that you would find on the kroner on the money, uh, because Again, much like Britain, Denmark has a royal family and a queen. Queen Margaretha II is the current queen of Denmark. Um, so uh, prime minister, Lauren, yes, definitely prime minister, not president. Um, so whereas the prime minister is doing all the, you know, leading of the country and all of the lawmaking and things like that coming up with the policy the queen in denmark is much like our own in fact i found this picture of the queen of denmark with the queen of england uh, Unfortunately, the Queen of Denmark rather overshadows our Queen in terms of height. Hmm. 
I don't know. Maybe we can be charitable and say that our queen is kneeling down, but I don't think she is. Mm. Um, <laughs> and James, yes, we have had female prime ministers, of course, Margaret Thatcher, Theresa May, so yes, that's why. Um, so uh, the Queen of Denmark plays a very similar role to our own queen. She's very important to the country, but she doesn't, she doesn't, she's not there making laws or chopping people's heads off or you know, doing that kind of thing. Uh, we keep, we leave that to the government, the prime minister, yeah. So the queen is the figurehead or the head of state, as we'd call her, um, much like our own, but the day-to-day -day running of the country is done by the Prime Minister instead. There you go. Um, now, here's a picture of the Prime Minister of Denmark with the President of America, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a reason that I haven't got a picture of them both together, and that's because um, late last year, the two of them fell out. Oh yes, they have never met, as far as I know, face to face because Donald Trump refuses to visit Denmark. He got very, very cross with Denmark. Yes, he did. Um, and it's all because of Greenland. Mm. Um, uh, oh, how old is the Queen of Denmark? I don't know. Uh, let's see if we can find out, shall we? Um, now, the reason that they got cross is all to do with Greenland. Um, Donald Trump decided that he would quite like to buy Greenland. This happened last year. Um, uh, so he was going, he planned a meeting, to, to, a visit to Denmark to go and meet with the Danish prime minister and to sort out a deal. You know, how much will you take for Greenland? How much can I give you so that I can buy that massive country? Now, before he came to Denmark, the prime minister, she pointed out that she doesn't technically own Greenland. And even if she did, she wouldn't sell it because, well, it's a country and she's not just going to sell countries to people because, well, that's a bit weird. Now, Donald Trump got very cross about this. He said that she was being childish and that she wasn't, you know, listening to reason and that he, he's now not going to visit her because, well, she won't sell him Greenland, even though she can't sell him Greenland because technically she doesn't own Greenland. He still got really upset and now refused to visit Denmark. So I can't find you a picture of them two them together, unfortunately. Let's see. How old is the Queen of Denmark? Ooh. Here we go. Uh, and who is her husband? Let's have a look. Hmm. Everyone's interested in the Queen of Denmark in the chat. Uh, let's see. Um, her, let me see. Her husband is Henri de Lambaudet de Montpiat. Uh, he died, sadly, two years ago. Um, I, I, I don't know if I pronounced that name right, but yeah, there you go. And she is 79 years old. So relatively young compared to our own queen. There you are. Um, and how many children does she have? Wow. Uh, she has uh, two children, uh, Prince Friedrich, who will take over the job when she dies, and Prince uh, Yoshim, uh, who is the younger son. There you go. Thank goodness for Wikipedia. Hey, there you are. So <laughs> 79 years old, um, a dead husband with a very confusing name, and two sons. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, these two world leaders not getting on particularly well. Um, Trump wants her to sell her, him Greenland. She cannot sell Greenland because she technically doesn't own it and she doesn't want to anyway. And so no more visits to Denmark. Poor old, poor old Denmark. They don't get to have Trump in their country. Oh no. <laughs> right. Here we go then with the bit that everyone likes the best. Oh yes, you can keep your wildlife. You can keep your maps and glaciation. You can even keep your president, prime ministers. Everyone wants to know about the economic development. Ooh. Now, um, uh, Mia Lilly is asking, what is the capital city? The capital city of Denmark is Copenhagen. Uh, let me write this up here. There we are. I need to like find a way of just keeping the capital city like on the screen at all times. There we are. It is a bit zigzaggy. Uh, uh, so our chart here, I'm building this up every week. We're adding in a different country so we can see our country alphabet with our with ourselves added in there as well, of course. So we've got a bit of uh, uh, an idea of what's going on. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with my zigzaggy diagram, what this shows us is uh, the current um, amount of money that people have in different countries. So the higher, the better, or at least the higher, the richer. Um, so we can see that down here, we've got two emerging countries, Brazil and China, um, with relatively low individual incomes for people. Um, 
our highest performing country, our richest country up to this point has been Australia, um, a country with a, a very, very strong economy, a very rich country. And the way we work out how rich a country is in this particular instance, there are many, many ways we could do it. Um, but in this particular instance, what we do is we take up all the money created in the whole world. Yeah. Then we, uh, oh, sorry, not the world, all the money created in a country, and we divide that equally amongst the amount of people that live there. So even though um, it tells us here that Denmark, on if we did that, if we divide up all the money in Denmark amongst all the 5 million people that live there, we would end up with $61,350 each a year. Pretty good. Um, now, it doesn't quite work out like that in reality, of course, because the babies of Denmark do not have any money. And, you know, some people are rich and some people are poor. But if we were to divide it equally, that's what we're looking at here. Um, so if we compare that to Britain, our uh, current total is $42,920. Uh, um, uh, we can see that Denmark has quite a lot more per year than us. Yes, yeah? so they're up quite a lot of money. So Australia was our most highly performing country, but now that has been beaten by Denmark, China and Brazil down here. Um, I'm hoping that we will do a, well, in fact, we will definitely do a, uh, uh, a developing country next time to see what a, what a truly poor country looks like, because even China and Brazil aren't doing bad, to be honest. Um, Oh, Laura's asking, why do we use US dollars? And that's because, well, the world has decided that because the US dollar was, was, I'm saying, probably still is, it depends, uh, in the current time, the US dollar is losing a bit of, of power at the moment. But generally speaking, the US dollar has been the, the base currency for the planet, and ev all the economics is worked out in US dollars. Now, there's no particular reason why it has to be the dollar. I mean, it could be the yen or the pound or the krona for, to be Denmark. Um, but it's if you're going to compare countries and how rich they are, we need to compare them on a level playing field. So the way that we do it is we um, pick a currency and uh, judge every country by that. And so it's the American dollar that's usually seen as the most stable, at least in history it was. So that's the one that's used. Um, so yes, in pounds, of course, all these numbers would be slightly lower. Um, in yen, all the numbers would be higher, that kind of thing. Um, oh, Singapore has Sing dollars. I never knew that. That's quite cool. I like the idea of that. Oh, there we go. Hmm. So yeah, we're, we're seeing our, our thing are definitely, oh, Eleanor, yes, it would definitely, definitely be Ethiopia next week. I cannot believe I didn't even, I hadn't thought of that already. Ethiopia is one of my favourite countries to talk about because we can then talk about Haile Selassie and he's my favourite guy ever. Oh yeah. So yes, Ethiopia next week, people. There you are. And that's a good example of a developing country. So we should see next week with Ethiopia that we've got a, a GDP per capita that's actually lower than this over here. So that's our money. Now let's scroll right back down past our protest pigs and we will come to the culture, of course. Now, I, I cannot believe that I missed out Lego, but I did. I, I didn't even think of Lego when I was putting this together. So let's start there. Um, Lego is made in Denmark. There you go. Everyone loves Lego. Um, in celebration, you should probably... Uh, all of you spend the rest of the day with your Lego sets creating protest pigs out of Lego. That's what I want to see. Oh, yeah. Um, now, uh, yeah, there you are. there's your challenge. Protest pig, a Lego protest pig, please. Or possibly a Lego mermaid, because uh, someone asked right at the start about landmarks. Um, now, there aren't any, well, there are some very impressive buildings in Denmark, but really the one thing that, that sort of sums up Denmark is this statue here that's out in, the, uh, out in the water on a rock. And this is a statue of the Little Mermaid. There she is. Uh, Bilal, I'm not sure. Bilal's asking me what's my favourite country. I don't know. I've got lots of favourite countries. So, yeah, there you are. Uh, ah, thank you. XXL memes is telling me that Lego in Danish means play well. Cool. There you go. Play well. Make a pig. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. so you can see here that we've got the little mermaid kind of looking mournfully out to sea now i'm sure a lot of you know the story of the little mermaid or at least the disney version of the, of the little mermaid uh oh captain toad is telling me there here that her head and arm got blown off once and they had to replace them i didn't know that that's a cool fact <laughs> uh, poor woman um she's not a particularly huge statue as to be said she's you know 
uh, roughly human sized, but she is still very, very famous. And of course, she's there to represent this writer here, who you may well have heard of. This is Hans Christian Andersen, possibly the most famous um, uh, export of uh, Denmark, maybe. I don't know. Um, and he wrote loads of children's stories, um, fairy stories, I suppose it would be better to talk about it. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. Um, he wrote loads of stories that are really famous today. Most of them, many of them you will know you're quite well. Some of them, they're, they're all a little bit darker. They, they sometimes don't have such happy endings as the versions that we tell today. Um, in Hans Christian Andersen's time, you know, things were maybe a little bit more brutal. Um, uh, but just to give some other examples of the stories that he did, uh, there's The Emperor's New Clothes here. Um, that's the story where the king or the emperor, I suppose. Um, he uh, is a very sort of, I don't know, rude, gru stupid king. Um, and he, he always wants the best stuff, the most amazing clothes. And one day a clothes maker comes along and tricks him and says that he's got this amazing magical cloth that, you know, he cannot, uh, only uh, intelligent people can see it. Stupid people cannot see the cloth. Um, and so the king, he pretends that he can see the cloth because he doesn't want to look stupid. So this tailor takes ages making him a costume out of this invisible cloth, which of course doesn't exist. Uh, the king, though, the whole time is like, no, of course it exists. Of course I can see it. I'm not stupid. And so he ends up walking out into a great big parade around the city wearing absolutely no clothes. And everyone laughs at him, of course, because, well, he's a big naked king. There you go. Um, so the Emperor's New Clothes is a story about how the Emperor's New Clothes don't actually exist. But of course, if you're too vain and foolish, then uh, you'll end up in silly situations, I suppose. There you go. And of course, one to tie in the national animal of Denmark, the story of the ugly duckling, oh, which I'm sure you all know about the ugly duckling. Um, he's a duckling who has some severe... Um, you know, issues with the way he looks, he's not comfortable in his own skin, uh, all the other ducks take the mickey out of him for being all gangly and, and weird. Um, uh, and in the end, though, he, well, in Hans Christian Andersen's version, um, he sees a, a big bunch of swans, he thinks, well, I may as well die now because, well, you know, I'm just an ugly duckling. So he goes over to the swans, hoping that they'll just peck him to death. Uh, but instead, they bring him into the fold because he's no longer an ugly duckling when he looks into his reflection he realizes that he is a beautiful swan ooh, ooh. Um, uh, is swan lake a danish story i don't know i not as far as i know laura but i honestly don't know the the where the swan lake came from i suppose it could be um i don't know if there's a connection there uh a, a quick google here we go do 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 uh it could well be couldn't it i mean uh, 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 no, I believe it's Russian, or at least it was composed by Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky. Yeah. So I assume it's Russian. Yeah, um, yeah there you go. Uh, they have swans too, I mean, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, a beautiful swan, Kyle, that's right. So, um, some other culture, here we go. Uh, we've got Sandy Toxvig, Toxvig here. She is Danish. I, I was racking my brains to think of famous people uh, from Denmark, and I ended up with Sandy Toxvig, who some of you may know from the Great British uh, Bake Off. I believe she's a presenter on there. Um, and the other thing that uh, Denmark is incredibly famous for is its beer. Um, now, apparently, Denmark has more breweries per populate, per capita than any other country in the world, which means that if you divide up all the people, uh, that you will find that there are more beer making places uh, in Denmark uh, per person than anywhere else on, on earth. Yes, there's Sandy there, yeah. So Sandy comes from uh, Denmark, there you go. And so the country is very, very, very famous for its beer. That doesn't mean, it, beer isn't necessarily quite so popular in Denmark as it is in the Britain though. A lot of that beer is, is sold in other countries. Um, uh, but uh, Denmark is famous for creating the beer, if not drinking it all, yeah. Uh, uh, she is, she is, she is, she is. From Noah? Hmm? Oh, I see, she, yeah, I get you, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, beer, we can also add in bacon, uh, they're still the, the well, I don't know if they still are technically the, the biggest bacon supplier, but they always used to be. Uh, I haven't checked uh, 
the stats on that one. Uh, and I suppose it would be very remiss, wouldn't it, if we didn't put some Lego in um, for prosperity here. Uh, here we go. So let's find. I don't know. I, I, I guess from some comments already that uh, people like their Lego land. Here we are. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Here we go. Uh, there is a Legoland in Britain, but it is not the original Legoland. The real Legoland comes from Denmark. Here we go. There we are. So Lego created in Denmark, and uh, ah, Captain Toad has been to, De to Legoland. Excellent. <laughs> oh, that's all right, Jasper. Thank you very much. Um, and lots of people in the chat have a lot of Lego. And it's thanks, of course, to the people of Denmark um, <laughs> that you have that Lego at all. Uh, I believe most of it is still produced in Denmark, um, as far as I'm aware it is anyway. Yeah. Uh, oh, hang on. I'm just uh, trying to catch up with the questions here before we go. What? <laughs> uh, and, oh, Grace is saying that she's been to a Lego land in this country. Uh, Kyle says uh, I'm not sure <laughs> oh, lots of people have been to Lego land in this country that's cool and lots of you have lots of Lego of course yes yeah uh, I'd, I'd love to see if anyone can make a, a Danish pe uh, protest pig out of Lego I'd be very happy to see that for sure <laughs> uh, Joshua is uh, requesting a lesson on Sweden which maybe we'll get to Sweden at some point but of course we've got a lot of alphabet to get through before we get there um, so uh, we'll leave Denmark there for today. Next week, um, we will have a look at Ethiopia, um, which is a country in Africa. So we get somewhere with a bit of a warmer climate, uh, but we also get a very, very different country from Denmark. If Denmark is a rich, uh, prosperous uh, country with you know a cool climate, um, Ethiopia is pretty much the opposite. It's a, a poor developing country with a very hot climate. So it'll be an interesting uh, counterpoint to Denmark, for sure. Uh, oh, Rowan is asking for Japan. I think when we get to Japan, I, J, J, I think Japan might be the, the choice there. I can't think of any other countries we're going to J. Hmm. Hmm. J countries. Not sure. I bet there is, I bet there's a really obvious one I'm just missing here. Yeah. Um, uh, we won't do England. What we're going to, we, we, we won't do England uh, in these lessons just because uh, I use England and the UK in general as a counterpoint to all the countries. So usually we compare countries to our own. Uh, just so if we did one just on, on England. Oh, Jamaica. Thank you, Hannah and Amelia and Benjamin. Of course, we could do Jamaica. Uh, yes. Yeah. So Japan or Jamaica or Jordan. Yeah, very good, Rick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There you are. <laughs> Loads of obvious countries with J. I need my alphabet check in. <laughs> and we could do Singapore when we get to S, although Joshua might fight you for the S for Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, tomorrow, ladies and gents, uh, what day is it? Wednesday tomorrow, isn't it? So tomorrow we are going to Sparta. Um, we looked at Athens a couple of weeks ago in ancient history. Tomorrow we're going to look at the counterpoint, another famous Greek city uh, where the Spartans come from, the Lacedaemonians. Um, we will then on Friday, because of course we don't do it on Thursdays, on Fridays we're going to go and look at another epic, another story of a hero. And this time we're going back to Greece and we're going to have a look at Heracles and his 12 tasks and uh, all that that involves. So it should be quite a good week. I'm hoping that I'll see you all again very soon. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as always, if you do have any work that you would like to show me, please do. Um, I try and reply to it all when I get, when I get shown it. Um, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>